physics sims in Blender. You know, these. God. Could watch those all day. Anyways, these videos pull in millions of views every day. And I want a piece of that god pie. These videos are so popular, I think, just because of how unattainable they are. Like, how is Minecraft Steve getting just obliterated with the sound effects, how smooth it is, how unusual it looks? It's like real life, but it's obviously not. Anyways, this is a whole new level of modeling and rendering. Or is it? <laughs> are these incredibly satisfying videos that hard? Do you need to be a Blender expert to make them? Do you need a NASA supercomputer to render them? So I load up Blender and found out for myself. Yo, who the f debone my default cube? There are a few types of these videos that come up in my feed. Cloth Sims, pretty self-explanatory. These are probably the most common ones that I see. Fluid Sims, also self-explanatory. Looks like water or other questionable substances. The magic with these is adjusting the viscosity to make slime. Honey. Now, soft body sims, these are my absolute favorite. You can make little floppy jelly cubes, spheres, have them bounce around and jiggle. <clears throat> Anyways, when you peruse the physics tab in Blender, you come up on a few different modifiers. But the ones we'll be using are these soft body, cloth, fluid, and collision. I wanted to start on cloth sims because they're probably easier, but I really wanted to do the soft body sims because it is just peak brain liquefying satisfaction. A soft body is simply put, a network of connected particles wrapped in a mesh. Each particle is connected to a few adjacent particles by springs that push and pull based on how much you want them to. This is also why when you change the triangle count, the simulation changes drastically. My first attempt at soft body sims were less than good. Nonetheless, I pushed forth. Turn off goal, max out bending, max out stiffness. Make sure your push is higher than your pull, unless you want this to happen. You'll be in business. If you remember from the applied differential equation section of APUS history, springs are defined by some force, which is the stretched distance times the stiffness of the spring. All you need to know is F equals MA, and F also equals negative KX, so X, the distance of your spring, equals this, which looks like this which instead of being absolute nerds and solving, we're gonna be smart about it and not care because this is a Blender video, not a math video. Once you dial in the settings, it really is extremely gratifying and starts to look like a little jelly ball until you add more vertices and totally ruin the simulation. Now my once young jelly ball full of life and aspirations is a sad, deflated lump of skin, like that nasty skin you get on pudding if you leave it out. On the cloth, technically it's a soft body, but just in 2D. Look at this, it works basically the same. This should be pretty easy, just gotta subdivide here, put that there, put that on there, okay. Let's hit play, wow. Okay, that was actually pretty easy. I promise you this first attempt, I literally changed nothing. I just added the modifiers and hit play. Uh, but if I wanted that smooth, satisfying glory, I needed to go a little deeper. So B, get out of here, get clapped on. <laughs> I needed to figure out a better way to subdivide my cube because using the subdivide function gives you a ton of unnecessary geometry on the edges which are super thin. Instead I settled on edge looping every dimension separately to get the perfect geometry, even the thin side. This worked perfectly and looked just like this. This is great and all, but I haven't even touched the parameters and it still kind of looks like a boring old cloth. So, just gonna bump that up, that- oh, I'll be honest, this one was way harder than I thought. Getting it to look like this... ...was so much harder than I thought, because there are like, eight main parameters to mess with. I don't know, Th the best way I knew how was to adjust one at a time while keeping the others constant, and none of them seemed to do anything. Now something I learned very quickly with these is that texturing, sound, whatever, is everything. It's less about the physics and really more of just how it looks. Like, look how terrible this looks versus how incredible this one looks. Dude, putting this material to clear makes this a million times better for no reason. That's a joke. There, there are many reasons, one of which is ray tracing. Alright, it's fluid time and you listen here, buddy. Get your mind out of the gutter. Okay. This is, oddly enough, probably the easiest one to set up, 
All you gotta do is go object, quick effects, liquid, boom. You're done. Now what you gain in development time, you lose in other time. You remember that NASA supercomputer I brought up earlier at the beginning of this video? Yeah, you might wanna go get one of those. This was by far the longest to render both the physics and the animation. Also, who thought at Blender it was a good idea to use the kinematic viscosity? The, the numbers are so small, it's so hard to dial it in for like a particular liquid. I went with the diffusion setting, but I guess you could just eyeball it. it. Makes it a lot easier. If you remember from the fluid dynamics chapter back in kindergarten phonics, Viscosity is a measure of internal friction, or how easily fluid molecules resist motion by sliding past each other. Just like solids do when they slide past each other. Um, professor, what the sigma? Blender uses kinematic viscosity even though it's kind of annoying, because its application is how long does it take for the fluid to pour out of this cup with just gravity, versus dynamic viscosity, probably what you're familiar with from high school, being applied to how much force do I need to push out this turd. <laughs> That was a horrible example. <laughs> this is because most fluid simulations are just water splashing, falling out of something, or, well. <laughs> okay, that's the last time I'll make that joke, I, I swear. But I'll be honest, this one's super hard to learn because I still have not found a YouTube video out there with a tutorial from scratch. They all use the quick effects option. So, you're on your own for this one, but just use the quick effects, change it little by little, and you'll, you'll get there. So there's something you gotta know about these simulations. They are nothing without texturing, lighting, and sounds. Just take a look at these two soft body animations and you tell me which one you like better. <laughs> the actual workflow for these simulations is like 50% coming up with a cool idea, 20% messing around with the physics, 50% messing around materials to make it really like come to life and then like 10% messing with the sound Get that ear tickling uh. for a three second clip It's gonna take like six minutes to render depending on your settings and your hardware and To be honest 60 or 30 FPS really is indistinguishable if you just render the final video in 60 FPS I mean it literally also cuts your render time in half literally Dialing in your render settings can be really important too, especially sampling and denoising. I don't know what computer you have, so I can't say, but for me, OptiX and these settings works the best. It's about one second per frame, maybe two. And every second counts because you most likely got a lot of frames to get through. Alright, I got a rant now. If you made it this far in the video, thank you. I cannot tell you how many times I'm scrolling YouTube shorts and I find the identical video from different creators, no crediting whatsoever. It's, it's infuriating. And it's not only a problem with just this, but any skilled art form. Keep in mind that these little satisfying clips are no joke. You need like real skill, <laughs> like 3D modeling, UV unwrapping, shader, material creation, sound design, video editing, and some sort of creative idea. It is a lot easier to just go on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, rip the video, and just repost it. And if you're a creator here, use your skills to put more than just a watermark. Integrate your brand or logo into something in the render that is impossible to remove with just CapCut, After Effects, whatever. Just take a look at the Minecraft bed with the sheet falling on it render I showed you earlier. My logo is literally a part of the reflection map for the falling sheet. That, that has got to be impossible to remove. And if you're a viewer of these videos, first of all, thanks for watching, but I know it's hard to look away. They're very satisfying and addictive but maybe dislike the video. Maybe report it. I don't know. You'll figure it out. And if you're one of the thieves, you're gonna have to answer to this guy. Okay. All right, the video's over. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, or you just like these kind of videos, maybe drop a like and a sub. I have a new big project coming out soon that you're not gonna wanna Or is it?
<laughs> um, Professor, what the Sigma? God, nice. <laughs> 